On behalf of Policy Insights Forum, welcome. Today we have Colonel Viktor Sormaka, the Ukrainian Defense Attaché, who's going to be providing an update on the Ukraine situation as the war enters its second year. Colonel Sormaka, over to you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, this is an honor for me to represent one more presentation from uh, my side on what is going on in my country, in Ukraine. And today, that's March the 8th, International Women's Day. And believe me, men and women in uniform in Ukraine are fighting all together. So, let's start our presentation with few slides. Maybe some of you still remember these faces during our previous discussion. So, just for remind you, what was the statements of Russian leadership before war started? So, we've been rejecting even the fact, Russians have been rejecting the fact that they are participating in war, that they are supporting by military means so-called Donetsk and Luhansk Republic. And we've been claiming that if Russia decides to invade Ukraine, it will be an easy ride, little splendid war, like Grenada style. Actually, General Konashenko, spokesperson of Russian Armed Forces, Ministry of Defense, uh, was dreaming about an easy ride into Ukraine with minimal losses. But instead of this, Russians were received roadway to hell. Mm. And not only Russians, because they invaded Ukraine from the territory of Belarus as well. From multiple directions, Russian forces started coming into Ukraine. And that's last pictures before the assault of helicopters and Russian airborne and special forces uh, units while they have been trying, Russians have been trying to attack and assault and get under control a stomach military airfield just nearby Kiev. So next time you see helicopters, Russian helicopters staying in this formation and tanks staying in these ho uh, horrible lines, uh, that's good indication that war is about to start. And that's a great indication for people who are working on lessons learned. Definitely, Belarus is still a neighbor, both Russia and Ukraine. And Mr. Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, is still the president of this country. Um, for us, he's not anymore a good friend because uh, his historic role has already proved itself. For us, he is just a good buddy of another dictator. So if we make a, a parallel, a parallels, for us, he is like a Duce, Mussolini, good fellow of another dictator. So Mr. Lukashenko and Mr. Putin, the two leaders of the countries uh, who started horrible, the most horrible war since 1945 in, in Ukraine and in Europe. How it started, you definitely remember. Because even a few days before invasion, mm -hmm. Mr. Chizhov, Russian uh, diplomat, high-profile diplomat, uh, representative at OSCE in Europe, he claimed that nobody starts war in Europe on Wednesdays. And Russians started this war on the night of Wednesday to Thursday. Mm -hmm. So multiple invasions throughout all the territory of Ukraine incoming strikes from Belarus towards Kyiv, from northeast of our country, from uh, Chernigiv, Sum region, Russia has been trying to develop their offensive towards our key cities, towards our capital, towards our industrial uh, cities. And of course, they have, significant, have, they have done significant, significant move to get under control south of Ukraine, Kherson region, in order not only to grab water, to get uh, water for Crimea, but to consolidate uh, its vital uh, land bridge to Crimea, vital for them. But Crimea is ours. And these fights we've been conducting, we've been participating in, uh, definitely uh, for us, that's an indication that uh, that's, a, that's a call for them. That's a challenge for them, but they are trying to do it in any possible price, at any possible price. So that's why at the picture the there is a vampire. And I'd like to remind you that then vampire wants to get his victim, he feels, uh, he feels the call, un appel. 
So that's why main purpose for the empire is just to suck them dry. That's exactly why Russia is trying to get Ukraine. Because for Russia, Ukraine, they consider it as a victim. And Kiev, they consider it as a their, their Russian capital, as the origin of their faith, mm -hmm. uh, the origin of their history, and the symbolism for Putinism to get back biggest country, free country in ex-Soviet Union sphere. That's the map of day number 10th of invasion. And now we slightly move to one year of invasion. Definitely you see the picture, how it's changed. The map, the boundaries, the areas of control, and by the way, the faces of Russian military leadership. Shoigu, Gerasimov, Surovikin, uh, multiple changes mm -hmm. in Russian leadership. Russian C2, Russian Irochi, military Irochi. And the uh, new person, that's Mr. Prigozhin. So if uh, Russia is doing good, it means there is only one winner, Mr. Putin. And we could see, instead of all these faces, only Putin's picture. Mm -hmm. But we don't see neither Putin's picture on the slide, nor uh, success on the battlefield. What do we see? That's a horrible fights. Horrible fights in eastern Ukraine and southern Ukraine. So we see mercenaries, multiple thousands of mercenaries, 50,000 of Wagner Group mercenaries, uh, up to 10,000 fighters, let's say so-called regular fighters, contractors, and up to 40,000 of ex-prisoners, because Wagner Group is recruiting mm -hmm. prisoners from the prisons in Russia. Yes, they are fighting with regular forces, along with regular armed forces of Russia. But nevertheless, if you are talking about rule of war, mm -hmm. rule of war conflicts, rules of engagements, I strongly doubt these ex-prisoners respect these internationally recognized documents. So, uh, picture with Mr. Prigozhin and the wreath behind him indicates that uh, we are losing people as well. Mm -hmm. So, you remember definitely how war started mm -hmm. around Kiev, all these huge convoys, 50 miles long, trying to come into the city, just blocked by their own assets and inability to penetrate our defense. And if we could have had high Mars at that time, we could have done it quick and dirty with this convoy. But we'll talk about a little bit later what assets mm -hmm. should we have been using that time. But nevertheless, our people, our men and women in uniform defended our capital. And Ukrainians stopped Russians not around Kiev, but actually in Kiev, on the highway going from the west of our city to the downtown, or in uh, areas of northern part of Kiev, or Bologna, some uh, DRG reconnaissance groups of Russians has been destroyed just five slash six kilometers from downtown Kiev and governmental area. How situation looks like now? What's the winter 2023? Uh, Europe, that's a very peaceful continent. And if people in Central Europe, they still believe that war is too far from uh, European capitals, that's not correctly the same perception we Ukrainians have. Please have a look, that's the red lines, uh, that's the borders of our country. And Russia, just right around the corner. So please have a look, that's uh, pictures of the towns in the Donbass region. Vuhlidar, Soledar, Marinka, Avdiivka. Distance between uh, uh, European capitals and uh, eastern part of Ukraine, that's just 2,000 kilometers, that's nothing. 
And war is horrible. War is ongoing these days. And what is going on in these towns, especially in area of Bakhmut and town of Bakhmut, that's a tragedy mm. for human lives. But that's exactly what we are here for, we soldiers of armed forces of our countries. We have main purpose to defend our land by any possible means. So we are defending our land. We are defending our Donetsk region. We are defending our Lugansk region. The Russians, they are trying to smash these buildings to the ground because they cannot move forward unless they destroy everything. So that's why we use heavy artillery, tanks, multiple launch rocket systems, anything to destroy towns and villages to move forward. That's not their moon, that's village in Ukraine. So lunar pages or um, craters, yes, that's like a moon from, from time to time because the amount of craters is significant. It's horrible how many pieces of artillery shells in coming uh, strikes we, are ha we have to face against. And believe me, fierce combats in this area are horrible. We are defending our land, we are defending every square feet of our soil. And Russians were trying to grab this, grab this soil and they destroy every single house, every single building. Doesn't matter, is it a hospital, is it a school? They don't care at all. They don't respect rules of engagement. Recently, you s definitely see what's happened to one of our soldiers. We are still appealing international community to investigate why Russian executed prisoners of war of Ukraine. And this video definitely a few days ago, a lot of newspapers in the world has published articles about this episode. But this soldier died with a word, glory to Ukraine, mm -hmm. because he refused to move out his shoulder loops and the patch. And instead of give up and instead of recognize the moral law of Russian forces to indicate what he has to do, he responded with the words, Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. And he was immediately executed by Russians. Mm. So that's why on multiple levels, we are requesting investigation of this episode. Bakhmut. Uh, that's a town of our military glory. We are defending Bakhmut with every tank, every soldier every air defense asset we have in the area. Yes, it's partially enclosed. And some people in the West, they consider that Bakhmut will be given up in days. Everything depends on the situation on the ground, on the train. Our military leadership is visiting this place to keep the morale of our troops and we are sending all necessary means all the assets, all the reinforcement we have to send because we are still holding the line. For us, Bakhmut, that's one more or another our town, piece of our land. For Russians, that's a tiny indication of their victory because they haven't grabbed, haven't conquered any significant Ukrainian city or town within the last six to seven months. So uh, probably President Putin gave an order to capture city, town rather, Bakhmut by all possible means. But we are keeping Bakhmut and we will be keeping it until we have this possibility. So I have been working on this presentation three days ago. So uh, according to this guy's assessment, uh, Bakhmut will be falling down 
in uh, two days, maybe three days. So that's exactly time to one, to one more time raise the question. Uh, do you still believe in Ukrainians, in their combat capabilities and their morale? Yes, we are doing our best. We are trying to keep this ground with all efforts we have to. And that's already not year of war. We are fighting since 2014. So Ukrainians and war fatigue doesn't match. Mm-hmm. So that's why we are keeping Bakhmut. Right. What will be next in the spring? Mm. Uh, according to the New York Times, uh, the most probable course of action that's definitely Russian counteroffensive from the east towards central Ukraine, central Ukraine, and in our case, definitely want to liberate full Kherson region, southern region of Ukraine. I would say yes. That's our strategic goal, to liberate southern part of Ukraine, Kherson region, and not only. So that's why they are, we are Ukrainians thinking about next steps. Mm-hmm. So people understand around the world that Crimea, that's Ukrainian peninsula, temporarily occupied by Russia. In order to liberate it and to bring, it back to, bring Crimea back to Ukraine, we need assets. And this tiny picture, in reality, that's a game changer. This uh, HIMARS system changed the course of war in summer 2022. And if we receive uh, appropriate missiles, we can do it one more time. What do we need the most? That's training, skills of our men and women in uniform, equipment from NATO countries, and campaign. Quick, effective campaign with support of all our friends, NATO countries, and not only, who are helping us with assets we desperately in need. Believe me, uh, cargoes we are receiving from all continents of the world. I mean, military cargo- cargoes and not only. Training we have in Europe, in the United States. Canada is helping us with training as well. Just yesterday, Prime Minister Trudeau announced uh, additional training efforts of Canadians to Ukrainians, mm-hmm. and it will be military medical mission. So Canadian instructors will be sent to Poland to help to train our soldiers. As well as Canadian tank instructors, as well as Canadians who are participating in Interfax UK training mission, as well as Canadians who are participating in Poland and train our combat engineers. So we have great support from Canada in training because we understand that skills of our soldiers and Western technology of a weapon, that's a crucial for our future spring counteroffensive. So we are very grateful to our friends for all the training we're receiving from our great supporters. United States decided to provide us tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. That's great. Blunt discussion within Europe, especially between Warsaw and uh, Berlin regarding Leopard's two tanks. Uh, Believe me, we have been looking forward to the decision of Germany to open this box of Pandora to bring Leopard's to Ukraine. And Leopard 2, it's a great tank. And all this tank coalition, which is formed now with support of Canadians, of course, who has sent these four tanks the very first among NATO countries. And this tank coalition will help us to go through uh, Russian defense in the right time 
in the right place with the right plan. So that's a few pictures of training of our troops. And uh, top right picture, uh, do you see on the turret uh, one of the instructors and definitely another gentleman? He is not military at all. He is ex uh, policy director of our foreign affairs ministry mm -hmm. and the current ambassador of Ukraine to Germany. Now I understand that even if our ambassador, Mr. Makeyev, is staying on the turret, how much it means to him to bring more and more tanks, to train more and more Ukrainian tank crews in order to support successful Je Croise Lidois counter-offense during springtime. And what's, what is our priority needs of these days? Definitely that's NASAMS. Definitely that's artillery. M777 plus 155 ammunition. Tanks, fighting vehicles. Our air defense umbrella is crucial to protect the lines of communications, ground lines of communications, because all logistic support we receive from our friends going by land. So it's why air defense umbrella is crucial for us and we're extremely uh, thankful to our Canadians friends that they're providing, they're about to provide us with uh, NASAMS which was procured already and paid for from uh, United States uh, via FMS program. Mm -hmm. But the timeline of delivery of these air defense assets we Ukrainians, we are looking forward to get it as soon as possible and we need to expedite this delivery. So hope uh, this month when President of the United States comes here, maybe some solution will be found to bring this NASAMS, Canadian slash US NASAM to Ukraine as soon as possible. And if we are talking about very important things on the ground, that's definitely these types, types of systems. So, mine rollers, mine plugs, that's the assets we need to move forward, to put this stuff on our tanks, to put this stuff on our armored vehicles, like ACSVs provided by Canada as well, and even on Humvees, we need it to go through these multiple lines of Russian defense to come closer to our goal, to come closer to liberation of southern part of Ukraine, mm -hmm. southern region, and of course to liberation of Crimea, Donetsk and Luhansk region. So we requested our friends around the world to get these systems because we needed to save lives of our troops. Thank you very much for training, but in order to save lives of our soldiers, we need additional assets as well. Yeah. That's just a funny picture uh, of Leopard 2 tanks and German beer. Actually, German tank and German beer. Uh, believe me, uh, there are multiple hundreds of tanks in Europe of Leopard 2, different modifications. And if you Google on YouTube Leopard 2 beer test, you'll find it's easy ride of a German crew with a good glass of beer. And believe me, the result of this test or ride test ride was extremely good. They haven't spoiled the beer. <laughs> Tanks, that's a current game changer we are considering as of these days, because previously we've been discussing uh, what was the game changer of summer 2022? Definitely, it was HIMARS system. It helped to liberate, uh, to liberate the southern part of Ukraine, right bank of Dnieper River. It helped us to liberate some areas in the Parisian region and definitely Kharkiv, part of Kharkiv region. Current game changer we consider its main battle tanks. Mm -hmm. So it's why we're extremely interested in getting more main battle tanks for spring counteroffensive and for beginning of summer, because we understand that it will be a tough fight. What will be next game changer? That's definitely aircrafts. 
So it's a picture on the left, that's uh, F-16 fighting Falcon, but with Ukrainian emblems and Ukrainian camouflage. We need training of our pilots, and these days there are two our guys uh, in US and where Ru uh, the Russians desperately trying to understand what is going on. Yes, guys, that's your nightmare. We are about to start training of our pilots, and these pilots will be using F-16. So believe me, uh, Top Gun training of Ukrainian pilots by US pilots will bring our victory closer. Mm -hmm. Top Gun training, we desperately need it for our pilots both on aircrafts and, of course, on simulators as well. And we have trained, skilled pilots. Why do we need this training? Because on the ground we control the situation. And Russians, after a full year of war against Ukraine, they don't have full air superiority. First of all, because of our air defense and because of our pilots who are skilled using Soviet-era aircraft. Believe me, it will be another game-changer once our pilots get fighting problems. And recently we have seen already a few uh, events uh, which we could, uh, could have considered as a very close, very close uh, aspect of uh, Article 5. That's uh, intercept, we would say, that's Russian missiles in the or close to airspace of NATO member countries. And these balloons, balloons over North America, that's another indication of uh, future plans. People who are still looking forward to get their, their victims and if distance between European capitals and here it's about two kilometers, distance between Northern America and North America and Russia across the ocean, a few thousand kilometers. So that's why we Ukrainians, we need to get combat aircrafts to better protect our airspace, and at the same time, to help you to protect cons in the military part of the United States and the areas around. And uh, why uh, combat aircrafts important for us? Are important for us? That's because recently, within a few last months, we saw some incidents in the airspace or nearby airspace or within the airspace of uh, our neighboring countries, both NATO and non-NATO. And uh, episode with two cruise missiles uh, and uh, Romanian airspace, uh, yes, it was crucial for our Romanian colleagues uh, to activate their fighter jets MiG-21 to verify where are these missiles. And another episode that's uh, North, North America and these balloons which came from uh, another part of the world. But what was the reason of these balloons to come across the Canada and United States for real reason, real, real pur purpose. And believe me, next week's then first balloon came into the airspace uh, of North America, Russians started duplicating these balloons, but definitely with tiny balloons just to provoke our air defense with some uh, reconnaissance missions. So Russians were more current with this uh, balloon tactics, mm. but definitely with lower level tasks. And we can move forward. I like these pictures because they indicate and they show us the emotions. Then President Biden came to Kyiv 
then President Biden came to Poland that gave great spirit, added spirit to our fighters, men and women in uniform, to our capitals, to our population, that we are not alone. And have a look at people on the right, that's uh, Russian president and Russian officials. And according to emotions on these faces, faces looks like not so good the perception of Russian populations, what is going on. Bright speeches, uh, so-called results of special military operations, they are not synchronized with emotions of Russians on this picture on the right. And just recently, me as a defense attaché of Ukraine to Canada, I was proud that Chief Defense Staff General Air visited Kyiv. In this wartime, Chief of Defense of Canada visited Ukraine. It was a very productive visit. Believe me, it was very productive, productive, productive visit. And we will see more about Canadian support in future months. Yeah. And uh, two pictures with uh, Ukrainian officials. Uh, first of all, it's our commander-in-chief commander of our armed forces, General Zaluzhny, General Zaluzhny, and uh, ex-ambassador of Ukraine to Canada, Mr. Andriy Shevchenko. He has spent many years in Ottawa, and now he has been appointed as a Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, mm. responsible for European integration. So, level of communication and right people on right positions, it's, that's extremely important for political support, for decision making, for helping us to fight. And that's the last picture of uh, my presentations. Uh, yes, that's the type of assets which are saving Ukraine. This, this type of assets are helping us to bring our victory closer. Tanks, anti-tank assets, artillery, ammunition for artillery 155, and drones. That's exactly the types of modern weapon which is helping to, to Ukraine now to fight and win this war. And part of this weapon came from Canada. So I'm extremely grateful to Minister Anand, to Chief Defense Staff General Air for all support we are getting from Canada. Thank you. Very interesting. I have some questions though from drawing from your presentation, Colonel. In your, in your view, what are Putin's strategic objectives after the failure of the initial invasion of last year? Uh, for them, for Russians, that's absolutely obvious already that their initial plan is over. That simply doesn't work. So, looks like within next months, we will, Russians we will be trying to capture at least four Ukrainian regions, so-called Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic territory, and to get their troops to the boundaries of these republics, and to get Zaporizhia region and Kherson region. You remember, definitely, they conducted a fake referendum to recognize it as a part of Russian Federation, but they don't control these regions, and they even had to remove the troops from the right bank of the Dnipro River. Mm -hmm. So idea is that uh, special military operation, main goal was to get under control all Ukraine. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. So their plan now partially to get only four regions, then to declare that they win, or let's, let's say we won the war, war is over, and they are ready for peace negotiations. And we will be pushing collective West to the solution, that bring Ukrainians to their decision to swap their uh, peace for the territory. But 
we don't think it's reasonable and they don't think it possible. Uh, as Russians, they say, taking into consideration reality. We see reality and uh, definitely they see what this reality is and how it looks like. So we don't consider it as an option. Colonel Samaka, as you know, uh, Mr. Putin has proffered uh, the option of employing nuclear weapons. What are the implications for Ukraine and uh, Russia and indeed the West? Uh, great question. And believe me, in autumn 2022, Russians were, were very close to these horrible decisions because the development of counteroffensive in Kherson region, stationed in the southern part of Kherson region, uh, around the city of Kherson mm -hmm. and Snake Islands, Mini Island, uh, they could have made a strike of uh, tactical nuclear weapons in order to deter our counteroffensive. But they decided not to do it that time. This time, during spring, if they decide to engage uh, theater or nuclear weapon, tactical nuclear weapon, it will be the biggest mistake ever. And they will not get the result. Their result will be absolutely opposite. First of all, Ukraine will not quit fighting. Any episode with nuclear weapon or mass destruction weapon just will boost morale of our troops. And it will boost support of our NATO friends. Because what will be the deterrence or what will be constraints and restraints of sending Ukrainian weapon once Russia engaged our country, the territory of our country with a tactical nuclear weapon. And I'm not talking at all about strategic nuclear weapon mm -hmm. and boomers, not at all. Tactical nuclear weapon, that will be the biggest mistake of Mr. Putin. He understands it, allies understand it, neutral countries understand it, that nuclear weapon will be last drop, which will make Russia absolutely isolated mm -hmm. and not respected by not only neighbors of Russia from all the sides, but there are all the countries in the world. What has uh, been quite impressive in the West is the, how the Ukraine military appears to have mastered a mix of high and low end technology on the battlefield. How did that come about? Uh, definitely it's a legacy because in uh, our DNA, we have uh, not hundreds of years, but a few thousands of years of war. And our predecessors, we have been fighting with Russians and their predecessors always multiple centuries. So we have this DNA, we have this in our uh, blood that we have to fight with Russian by all possible means. So it's why our genius engineers were developing payloads for drones. Mm -hmm. A lot of people now are admiring how effective our operators mm -hmm. of the drones. So these bodies, just 20, 25 years old guys, they are not professional militaries at all. They are operating these drones because they are successful gamers. So uh, they have been playing PlayStations years and years in peaceful Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And now they are defend, defending their home with joystick, but engaging targets, Russian tanks, infantry fighting vehicles. Uh, command and control systems of our armed forces with support of our friends definitely uh, has been upgraded up to the very high level with support of our IT guys. So Ukrainian IT specialists are probably among the best in the world. And again, guys from uh, offices changed good suits to military uniform and they are sitting in the basements of uh, Eastern Ukrainian cities, doing great job with, with these uh, IT systems, protected, encrypted, 
perfectly synchronized with terrain and exchange of uh, signals. And, of course, just simple skills of fighters, how to survive in their, this type of the year. Because winter, that's a challenging time to fight. You can imagine what is going on in the trenches mm -hmm. and how important it is to keep your feet dry. Mm -hmm. feet dry. Um, Putin's latest offensive appears to have bogged down due to the Rasputitsa, better known as General Mud. How was this not a planning concern for the Russians in your view? Oh, we're in hurry. Russians, they are in hurry because we understand once our trained soldiers, tank crews, operators of air defense systems are in theater, mm -hmm. it means war is lost. Actually, it's lost for Russia already, but they just rejected the fact that war is lost. Once trained, skilled operators of guns of excellent tanks, Leopard 2, arrive to theater, it means it's over. So that's why the only chance for them to show at least any results of always uh, fights in Eastern Ukraine, that's just to bring more and more troops to the front line and to smash them against our fortresses like Bakhmut. Mm -hmm. So that's why, again, they don't control the time. Last year, the, the Russians have been thinking when to start the campaign, invasion, and probably they lost the moment to start it on time. And Spring helped us uh, to get a lot of Russian main battle tanks with assistance of our tractors. Mm -hmm. As of now, General Mud definitely have an impact on two both sides, but nevertheless, military planning doesn't look good from the side of Russian leadership. Mm -hmm. And so you've basically alluded to some issues in your presentation as to uh, requirements of the Ukraine military. What does Ukraine really need to bring victory closer? Uh, definitely, that's a few nice pictures we had in our presentations with uh, uh, air defense as a center of gravity of our needs. Air defense, air defense to protect our critical infrastructure, air defense to protect our populations, and air defense to protect our logistic lines of support and logistic hubs. So then, that's artillery. Artillery and 155 ammunition for this artillery, mm -hmm. and 105 as well. Tank ammunition. Great Leopard 2 tanks, they have uh, 120 millimeters cannons, and that's extremely effective cannon for fights in the open field. Yes, that's exactly like here, like Winnipeg, like Manitoba, flat prairies. Mm -hmm. That's the southern part of Ukraine. So imagine dozens, dozens, dozens of main battle tanks coming all together in one strike with extremely good and skilled operators of cannons and with Russian tanks, even in trenches or in positions. But Russian tanks have been firing multiple thousands of uh, rounds these months. You can imagine the quality of their barrels. And if we are talking about five kilometer distance between two tanks, that will be the first shot result and the effectiveness of the tank crew. Mm -hmm. So it's why tanks and ammunition for these tanks. And of course, fighting vehicles to bring our infantry closer. We definitely understand that in summer campaign 2022, Ukrainians have been using Humvees Humvees to move fast in the southern part of Ukraine and in Kharkiv region. Russians have made lessons learned from, again, from this fact and their defensive positions probably slightly different. So we cannot do the same thing with uh, fast strikes only with Humvees and light vehicles like mm -hmm. Humvees, like 
Michelle, APC senator, we need stronger, we need fighting vehicles with uh, 25, 30 millimeters chain guns. UAS systems, definitely requirement, are one of our requirements. And first wish, that's definitely uh, assessment of our Minister of Defense. He just yesterday announced that Ukraine needs 1 million of 155 ammunition shells. So that's types of support, this type of assets will bring Ukraine closer to our victory. Mm -hmm. Well, as a professional military officer and someone who's been monitoring this war for quite some time in your duty as the defense attache and imparting information, what are the lessons for Canada from this conflict? Thank you. Great question. And after six years of my tour of duty, I understand that in Canada you need to invest, first of all, in manpower, in men and women in uniform. Because when war begins, you have to bring soldiers to the front line and you have to get them on the front line well trained, ready to execute the orders. No chance to bring to the front line people who are not ready to fight or people who are wondering what to do next because responsibility for the actions that's probably one of the biggest concerns for soldiers in the world now so please invest in development professional development of your men and women in uniform tank crews fighter jet pilots operators of air defense systems uh, engineers combat engineers that will help to be better equipped better trained to fight in the future not only here but thanks god canada is safe but once uh, canadians within nato decide or have to take part in a war we don't know where yet people should be ready people should be trained then protecting of uh, infrastructure we are now facing development of uh, hypersonic weapon mm -hmm. so that's why distance between uh, russia china and australia or, or new zealand but it's not distant at all and arctic that's the that's the just distance between point a and point b so canada is not a sanctuary anymore mm -hmm. so hypersonic weapon uh, quantum technologies artificial intelligence that's definitely the challenges for the future canadians so that's why innovations are crucial and the intention of the Department of National Defense to create uh, in Eastern Canada Diana, uh, to implement Diana project, to start mm -hmm. it, uh, to upgrade it to new level and to make it as a part of NATO cent center of excellence, even on climate change. That's a great initiative. So it's why innovation, that's a key to future success. Procurement. War has uh, described, has, has shown to us how important to get trained officers, staff officers who are capable to support procurement mm -hmm. and delivery of assets. So it's why serious projects for replacement of assets in uh, Canadian Armed Forces, that's great. Finally, finally, F-35 sign up and mm -hmm. will be coming future royal canadian navy 
fleet uh, and uh, new types of uh, ship. That's great. Helicopters and replacement of available aircrafts. That's crucial. Uh, you have great uh, munition supply program in Canada. And I would say that it was one of the best thing, things here uh, I've been working with. So if you have your national secured munition supply program, it means if, if something happens in the world nearby, across the border or in different areas, you still have your own munition supply program from cartridges to 155. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's uh, what do I see as the lessons learned. And looks like war in Ukraine, uh, that's the uh, biggest lesson that only united collective West can win. Because the main uh, mistake of Mr. Putin and his military leadership, it was the, that the Russians, they have underestimated the joint West, the mm -hmm. capabilities of NATO allies and the resilience, resilience and their desire and intention to stop not only Putin, but his policy, Putinism. He was a good president for Russians. He has brought a lot for Russian population, economic growth, because of course fuel uh, oil prices. Mm -hmm. uh, Russian has been Russian has been respected on the international arena. Yes, of course, Russia is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, mm -hmm. and even a few wars that Russia conducted recently were successful. Definitely, uh, that's Chechnya wars, actually both of them, not sure what both of them were successful for Russians. Mm -hmm. uh, war in Georgia in 2008. Yes, in 2014, it was swift campaign and they used opportunity to betray the neighbor because Russians and Ukrainians, we have been neighbors for half thousand years. Mm -hmm. And once we understood Ukraine is weak, in troubles, they made the move and they captured our Crimea. War in 2022, that's the nail in the coffin of President of Russia. I cannot say it's last. But nevertheless, I strongly doubt Mr. Putin is satisfied with what is going on in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably he feels, he feels guilty already for the things he has done personally. And his inner circle people, advisors, they understand as well that it was a stupid, stupid, stupid idea to invade Ukraine. On behalf of uh, Policy Insights Forum, Colonel, I'd like to thank you for your time and your presentation and keeping us informed of what's happening in the uh, Russo-Ukraine war. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Slava Ukraini.